Um, I'm here to, uh, for the first time as a uh, guest speaker, and I will be talking about our journey with the WSO2 product. We've started quite a while ago, and they've underpinned um, a quite important product which we have taken to the market and is currently live. So when we started this journey, we, we started with the golden circle in a sense, where instead of saying this is what we do, this is how we do it, and this is uh, why we do it, we started from why do we need to do this? So we've done a market survey, and we looked at the market, we looked at retailers, we looked at what other people do, and we've realized that uh, there's a gap there. There's about 78% of the consumers want time slots, and around 86% uh, of the consumers want um, something as a convenience delivered to them. Um, around 89% of the consumers would like to have uh, basket candy, something they can use multiple options, multiple fulfillment options. 96% of the consumers definitely want to see tracking, something moving. They want to know when the goods will, will reach them. Um, but ultimately, retailers offer around 65% of that, which leaves a huge chunk of the market underserved. So this is why <laughs> we embarked on the effort of building a platform. So our digital transformation journey was set to posit positively disrupt the, the time slot uh, delivery space. And in doing so, we decided that we want to build a platform. Everybody wants to build a platform today. Uh, and that platform has to um, spark interaction, to uh, be underpinned by publishing business functions uh, through an abstraction layer, the APIs, which are now sitting at the heart of every interaction, every integration in, in multiple systems and to um, open new channels and uh, reach new, new streams of revenues. So key challenges we've had, obviously we had to move from our data centers um, to the cloud because we wanted to become a, a cloud native uh, platform. So create open RESTful APIs to ease the pain of integration, to, to make ubiquitous points, touch points, to enable identity federation, so bring your own identity now is, is something which is uh, common. We were talking about bring your own devices. Some companies still struggle with that today. Foster innovation, spark a community of developers which will think of other ideas, bring them to market. We can't think of everything, but if we give them the tools, if we give them the, the touch points, if we give them technology, then they will help us and help themselves and we can go to new territories. Simplify integration. Integration is, is always needed, but is a timely beast. It's always a silent killer and can have negative impacts onto how you, um, you go to market. So why WSO2? At the beginning of the journey, we started looking at various different products. And as we um, started an evaluation process uh, based on some tenets, we have considered capability versus our requirements, formats, protocol, connectors, um, a language, and we decided that we will uh, stop at Java because Java is omnipresent in the enterprise world, integration, it offers you a lot more. So we had either .NET or Java. New languages are emerging. Node.js, it's making a play, but still it's quite difficult. Cloud vision, we had to have a company which has a vision, has a roadmap, will be there to support us in, in two years, in three years, in 10 years. Um, and also they have to have a, a solid ecosystem of partners which can um, deliver the support should we need it. And there is no road without any bumps. Hence, in the end, we, we decided that we will select an open source platform an open source platform as is selecting open source software is one of our primary tenets and in doing so we engage with the companies behind it so they support us, uh, we support them and we form synergies, we, we, we reinforce partnerships. And the reason we went to um, WSO2 was primarily because they are called or they can be probably the only one 
which can be called a full middleware stack. So you would have had solutions for your identity server, you would have had solutions for your APIs, you would have had solutions for um, ESB, microservices anti-pattern, <laughs> or you have um, complex event processing, you have uh, data analysis services. So there's a whole range of products we could assemble, we could couple and uh, derive various benefits. To start with, we selected three of them, and uh, we selected the identity um, server, we selected the API manager, and um, also the ESB. And we decided that we will do this in a DevOps manner. That was a journey. The other reason we selected them, being inspired by, by Paul talks in the early days, I think he can sell anything. <laughs> it's quite um, inspiring. We, we learned that Docker has um, hit the planet and has a huge impact, and obviously Docker has an impact on WSO2 and the way WSO2 will, will evolve in the future and is currently evolving. And that also enables, through DevOps, um, microservices with an ESB in the center, or not, or, it, or progression of an ESB, but enables a lot of functionality. So you can create APIs, publish APIs, you can have workflows, single sign-on, uh, self-service, um, leverage metrics, monitoring, ESB. You can deal with orchestration. You can deal with um, transformation should you need so. And it can be an integration pattern there. You can go to talk to various other platforms, SOAP, multiple protocols. The identity service allows you to bring your own identity, uh, leverages on standards, XAML, OAuth, um, XAML for entitlement, uh, multi-tenancy, which is, is, is key, is fundamental for us, so we can have separation between tenants of the platform. And this in the context of DevOps, so you want to be able to press the red button, you want to be able to provision those servers, you want to be able to uh, go to bed, and even if there is an issue, metrics monitoring should actively or proactively deploy certain scripts which will destroy the compromised instance. You will come, wake up, and inspect the issue and potentially apply a patch. But that's in the comfort of your daily work, not at 2 p.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. So a high-level view of our architecture. And that shows the layers of the on the dot. And we use, obviously, um, Apache. Tomcat, um, Cassandra as a very high performant and resilient database is distributed. It works across um, various zones, data centers. And these are the three components we, we decided to go to market with to leverage all those functionalities. And obviously, at the core, the API manager, which enabled us to expose the functionality we want, enabled us to put the presence we want people to, to touch upon and enables us to foster the community we wanted to build. And in doing so, we've been extremely successful. Recently, we had a tech sprint with um, several high-profile companies sending teams of developers there and trying to build innovative products within 24 hours. And we've had quite amazing products uh, emerging in that space. And, um, that also generated further leads and further interaction between companies and, and business. So, continuous deployment with WSO2. When you think of WSO2, you may not necessarily think of microservices initially if you look with a magnifying glass, but if you take steps back, you start to see the complexity you need to deal with. But however, we need to bring this complexity to a common denominator and in WSO2 world, the common denominator is uh, carbon. So you can start building on that, injecting all the layers you need the same way you would inject those layers in a Docker file. So you can have various elements, configuration, make use of the CM tools like Ansible's, uh, Ansible, AWS CloudFormation, because we went to AWS first. Continuous integration, Jenkins, metrics monitoring, New Relic, Nagios, and some other tools. So that supported us 
through WSO2 and their partners, which are here in force, Yellow, big shout out. They've helped us to, to move this uh, uh, journey forward. So this just shows an image of what's the old world versus the new world. We were looking to validate um, some of our decisions when we've made technological decisions. We've had ESBs, obviously, before, um, and they've, they've been very successful for us. But by introducing another ESB or another company which has ESB at the center, are we going to have any performance gains? Are we, gonna, um, are we going to be able to, to, to drive uh, innovation? So that shows it there. We've been uh, able to um, shave off a lot of response time, and that's across the stack you've seen earlier in AWS. So in moving to even more performant clouds, oops, I shouldn't have said that, um, <laughs> we, we, we improve even on those numbers, and we've tested some of, some of those aspects already. Um, so our platform goals, and this is a big shout out to Sanjit Paul Chowdhury, which is the author of Platform Revolution. I, I highly recommend everyone have a look at it because he depicts and he encrypts in his book the journey from pipes to platforms. And that actually shows the journey of every business. And what we call today digital transformation, in essence, is encoded in that book. And it, we, we were born in, a, in an era of industry, industrial technology where everything has been built, bang, 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 and it just moved forward, and the internet sort of hit the planet, and suddenly people can interact, people can spark, people can communicate. So everything has changed. You can't just sequentially produce something. So we want the same. We want to be at the heart of the interaction, at the heart of producers and consumers, and be able to leverage those values. And any platform you would design or you wish to design, if it doesn't generate that value for all the users, it will be a failure because either the consumers will leave you or the producers will leave you. So on the dot in our space, uh, in its journey to disrupt the time space, um, the time delivery section can offer the retailers a convenient fulfillment method, can offer candy sugar in the basket can offer several journeys and APIs and integration and, and reach, which wasn't uh, previously possible. To the consumers, we offer convenient time slots and we offer convenient delivery uh, collection times, continue, convenient collection time slots combined. And also we, we power a developer community through the APIs we've, we've published and all the functions we've chosen to, to make public. Also, it enabled us to, to leverage existing technology and have a road forward and maybe take some things from the frying pan and bring them into the future. So these are the points of we set on to achieve. And has experienced late just a short video. On the dot is a new type of service that delivers around you. Instead of waiting in all day for something to arrive, we guarantee it will be delivered within a one hour window of your choice, or your next delivery is free. To get started, register at onthedot.com and see the stores that are within a five mile radius of your delivery address. Then buy your items direct from your chosen retailer in store, over the phone, or online by selecting their click and collect service. You can also use On The Dot to collect items from retailers that aren't on our site yet. Simply tell us when you want your stuff. Provide us with the collection details from your retailer and let us take care of it. Once it's on its way, you'll be able to live track it from the collection point right to your front door. Keep an eye out for us on retailer websites or at the till point in stores as one of the delivery options. On the dot is quick, convenient, and costs about the same as next day delivery. So you can get on with the things that matter most to you. On the dot, deliveries when you want them. That's a great plug. <laughs> Thank you. So one thing to say about our operation is pretty much like the microservices um, architecture. We have to invite chaos and actually design everything we do with chaos in mind. We need to design everything based on um, common components, the human beings, Mark 1 or Mark 2 or Mark 3. 
these people can suffer um, or can not be able to attend or fulfill a function, so we need to redeploy. And we need to be able to orchestrate all that in the confines of SLAs and, 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 and really strict elements and operate at scale. So I would say that that actually <laughs> classifies our business model as, as a pure microservices sort of operated because we can deal with disaster. We deliver on SLAs, we redeploy constantly, and we always improve. So we rinse, repeat, iterate, rinse, repeat, iterate. So at the heart of our product, open APIs, and with these open APIs, we've, we've managed to reach communities, new communities, create some new products. We've also taken proven technology, and that wouldn't have been possible with that, without WSO2, without their um, uh, skill sets and without their knowledge and assistance, without partners, Yenlo, Harman, all this ecosystem which has supported us on the journey to, to, uh, to today. Innovation, we, we, we've created this community. We set on to create a community, we've created a community, we tested it, we've generated new products. Integration, so we spark new integration, we go to new businesses, we made that journey easier because it's based on standards, it's based on, on we take whatever format, it becomes REST, it becomes over HTTPS, Secure, HOS, and, and so forth, so you can leverage all those aspects. Revenue, we've also created value for the partners, for ourselves. Obviously, the glue is data, we look in the data, we analyze, we monitor, we mine, we extract patterns, and we, we, we empower ourselves, the community, and our partners to do better. Just as a journey, we're all familiar with the old days of the monoliths and the, the mission of the microservices to chip away at the monoliths and basically take that away, bring all the gats outside. If you can't, bring a good, if you can't build a good monolith, you won't stand the chance to, <laughs> to build a complex system. So from the first tier application, not many APIs. Second tier, yeah, something started to occur. Web tier, they've started to increase. Um, between web tier and the third tier, obviously loose coupling, mobile first, cloud first, APIs have become fundamental. Everything is abstracted through an API. So that's why, I mean, I can't stress enough the, the term of APIs, although it's an old term today, has a slightly different meaning, um, but it's fundamental to our journeys and our businesses and our um, objectives. So in building that cloud native platform, we, we, we've taken, we set upon on five particular um, reasons. And as you can see there, cost is in the center because it's always one element. The bean counters will, 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 will not look at it favorably if it goes overboard. Um, but Combined, everything actually reaches that particular goal. So skill set, lifecycle speed, and integration. So those considerations, obviously we introduced more complexity, and that could potentially mean more time. So cost, does it really um, cost? Can we reuse it? Can we simplify? So can we diminish cost? Speed, can we save time? Well, we just actually produce, uh, we save work, but we take on board the technological debt which we need to pay later as we need to re-engineer. Skill set. Are we, did we make the right decision on the skill set or we will have to re-recruit cost again? We will have to re-engineer, hence our decision to stay with Java. Integration. Integration, if it works well, it will save time, undoubtedly and can, whilst you have a wider number of APIs through monitoring and metrics, can actually become simpler because you can act in a, in a more informed way. And lifecycle, DevOps in a sense, and lifecycle, is this a joint experience or you just have a, a smorgasbord, something which looks really weird and it doesn't really work pretty well? So. WSO2 has empowered us to, to achieve um, all those five elements. And I'm just going shortly. 
Normally when we go to market, we, we take that on board, so we will produce something as quick, but we will need to, to rinse and repeat because it's just the tip of the iceberg. We've done something, uh, what we today call the MVP, and we will take key features, we go, we produce something, we validate it, we go, we take it to the market, uh, but then we have to continuously iterate. So how is this mounting? You have business users, which can give you the right or the wrong information, and that's why it's, it's better to be able to test. An API will, will enable you to fork traffic through versioning, so you can publish new features, you can set a pop-up to your uh, consumer. They say, yes, I accept, I want to use this new screen, so suddenly you have real data, and you will know if that feature has um, uptake in the market, and you can deploy, you can then go to your whole population. If it's no good, roll back but you can do this really without the UAT team uh, to some extent because no matter how many testers and, uh, and people you have, when you go live, you still hit the snag. Or it might not really work because it's what we believe versus what the actual consumers want. Technology churn. Technology is always changing, so this churn has a huge impact. So how do you abstract that one? Again, you can uh, hide those uh, levels of um, advancement behind APIs. You don't have to change the API, you don't have to change the, the endpoint, but you can change everything inside the service, which is uh, proxied through the API. Devices are, and OS, is that this is a huge explosion. You have so many operating systems, some now being literally uh, quite key, Android on the mobile world, iOS, uh, Windows, and many others. Um, and the number of devices. The devices have literally exploded. How do you go to all these devices? How do you ensure that the experience is the same? And the unexpected, <laughs> to some extent. The fridge which talks to you, yeah? The iPhone, all the IoT world, and all that information, all this PubSub information, context you need to create, context you need to manage, and, uh, and the communication you need to ensure that it, it really works. So speed, speed is great, but it's challenging because you have to consider the client platforms, data silos, integration and skill shortage, and obviously the change and the upgrade path. Skill set, specialization helps, sometimes could be a hindrance because stacks can grow unwieldy and the API can touch dozens of those systems. Integration. You put your system at the heart of many platforms and they can have an impact. Integration is not that complex, but it's a time drain. The, uh, the number of APIs can explode. Uh, and when you transition between the third and the fourth, obviously that starts to increase so you can benefit of loose coupling. Lifecycle, DevOps, you can design, develop, test, and you can leverage continuous integration Agility actually is all about iteration. And at the end of the day, it's all about abstraction. You have API versioning, no more silos. You bring DevOps together. So we've produced on the dot. <laughs> and in producing on the dot, we went to market with a platform which is adapt adaptable. So we can adapt. It's accessible because you can self-sign on. You can start consuming the APIs. You can go to developers.onthedot, and you literally hit the WSO2 API manager and the identity server. They are integrated because we obviously have multiple systems uh, talking to each other. And we've managed to connect devices, and that brings us into the API center service order, or oriented architecture. We've connected data because we leverage a lot of data now, and connected platforms because we've integrated with partners and their own platforms. And we've connected a user experience, because we've created our own user experiences, but they are in turn connected with our partners. So that needs to work seamlessly. So if we fast forward a few years from now, where do we want to be? Why did we do this? Again, back to the golden circle. This is how it will look. And we're pretty confident that we can achieve this with the right partners and with the right technology stack. Thank you.